Carey, thanks for stopping by and uh, allowing us to honor you here at IndieWire. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, uh, where we're calling you the Auteur Award. Um, what does Auteur mean to you? And do you hear like that word bandied about a lot these days? More so in like the old school Hollywood days or yeah. old school cinema days, Auteur. I think these days it's, it's uh, people seem to like react against it. So yeah. you, you would never, you would never want to like call yourself an auteur. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. It's it's a little too uh, hoity-toity. Yeah. No, well, I just like yeah, people would just tear you apart. I think so. It's yeah. only uh, yeah, thank you for you know throwing that label my way. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a good word, and honestly, yeah. these days of everyone doing so much uh, across platforms, drama, comedy, you name it, yeah. it seems like there there's a more room for someone to be auteur esque. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's weird because like obviously filmmaking, whether it's on television or film, there's so many people involved and it's always hard to sort of like from project to project attribute credit because it's so fluid these days. Like who writes, who develops, who comes up with the ideas, who executes the ideas, what the actors bring, what the photographers bring, what a, sometimes prop people or even just someone standing on the side bring. So it's, it's a huge collaborative soup, you know. But I suppose uh, uh, on, the, on the authorship side of things, um, it's always great when someone gives you the reins, whether it's a studio or a financier, to, to make something that is that vision inside your head. Well, you were one of the first people back when you did True Detective. There was so much talk about film, television, the merger of the two, the blurring of the lines, and it's much more common these days, but you were kind of early in the process. Uh, is there still a line at all, or has it been completely blurred? Um, that's interesting. You know, it's. You think of, for example, with uh, uh, Quaron doing uh, Roma with Netflix, uh, for example, which is a major cinematic work, you know, done on the 65 format, digital, but still, you yeah. know, large format sensor, large format screen. That feels like it belongs in a cinema space, and I watch it in cinema, but it's going to exist for most people on their, com on their computer screens or on their televisions back home. So I think that it's definitely 100% blended now because once you have, you know, great filmmakers like him crossing over, and the way in which people consume the stories being from, from so many different devices and platforms, it's like, what is cinema? What is television? What is streaming anymore? Right. It's really right. difficult to apply. You know, just because it's screened first in a cinema, does that make it a movie? Just because it's screened first on a, on, a, on a laptop and then screened later on a screen, is it still just a, a television film? It's, yeah. it's uh, you definitely have old guard people trying to hold on to uh, uh, labels that don't really apply anymore. But being a storyteller is yeah. being a storyteller, right? Yeah. And that's the most important thing. Let's talk about Maniac. Uh -huh. um, so that, that scratched a lot of itches, right? I mean, you got to do so much with this yeah, show yeah. And, and play with so many different formats and styles and genres. Uh, uh, looking back now, uh, did it feel like you got to do a lot with, with a short amount of time? I mean, it was definitely sold to me as something where you could play around with a lot of genres. And um, we did get to, uh, it's like, I think once you like start scratching an itch, you know, you, you just want to do more. And there's like so many worlds I think we could have continued exploring. So it, was, it just sort of fed the fire more than anything to, to keep looking in different styles of filmmaking, different styles of storytelling. Yeah. yeah. What do you make of all the reaction to uh, your Bond news and uh, how, how people reacted to you? Uh, I don't. You know, I don't have any Google alerts on myself, <laughs> so it's, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. So I don't really know how people have reacted because I don't really want to hear any negative, you know, perspective on it. It's been pretty positive. But, but, so uh, amongst you know, you know, my friends and stuff, everyone's really excited, yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, uh, I'm obviously very excited to be digging into it. So. Beyond that, more episodic, or are you still going to be straddling back and forth? I have a couple projects that I want to do that are definitely for the the streaming or or television world, just because of the length of the stories. Uh, um, but I, I think I'll just keep going back and forth. Okay. You know, wherever wherever makes the most sense for the story itself. So.